around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Looks like he's got himself a pretty nice camp there. I don't care about his camp. All I want is something to eat. He's a hunter of some kind. He'll sure have meat around. He's better. It's the last we'll eat between here and Dodge. Why are you in such a hurry to get to Dodge? Don't like this prairie, Jesse. I like towns. Say, this fellow's got something cooking in that fire of his. Good. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, hello, friend. Oh, there. In time for supper. Get down. You get down, Jesse. I'm staying on my horse. What? Do like I tell you. All right, Bill. We'll have to eat on a trail, mister. We're riding for Dodge. Are you sure, friend? I've got some buffalo ribs roasting here. You can take them along. You got a sack we can carry him in? Well, I ain't got many sacks, but... Sure, you can have one right over there by my pack saddle, son. Thanks, Miller. You alone here? Oh, I had a partner, but he quit. That's a shame. This sack okay, mister? Sure. Help yourself to the ribs, son. Take all you can eat. I'll roast some more for myself. Now, this is mighty good of you, mister. Don't stand there jawing all day, Jesse. I'm not. I'll just take these four here, mister. Take them all. Yeah, go ahead, son. You're welcome to them. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, thanks. Now, get mounted, Jesse. We've still got a long ride. Bye. Bye, son. Good luck. You hunt buffalo, don't you? I do. It's kind of hard without a partner. That's your Sharps rifle leaning on that pack over there? Hmm? Well, of course it is. Mister, why don't you get a good pistol like mine here, see? Huh? No. No! Oh. Bill! You killed him. Sure. He ain't no use to anybody. You shot him. For nothing, right in the face. Well, sure, I shot him. But he was a nice old fellow. Why'd you do it? Listen, Jesse. You want to be a gunman. I'm learning you how, right? What's that got to do with this? You're going to be a gunman. you got to get used to killing people. I was just showing you how easy it is. No. I'm learning to handle a gun so as I can kill one man when I find him. One man, that's all. I don't like just shooting people You'll down. get used to it. Oh, let's ride. Yo, we I got another one, Mr. Dillon. Look at him. Yeah, he's a good one, Chester. Bigger than any you caught, I'll bet you. <laughs> I'm sure he is. I haven't caught any. Not one? I haven't even wet a line, Chester. Well, you know, sometimes fishing's fun because you don't even have to fish. You mean I've been doing all the work while you was just sitting here on the bank watching the river? And enjoying myself. Hey, did you catch enough for supper? If I throw half of them back, there won't be. Now, don't be muley, Chester. Next time I'll do the fishing and you can be lazy. Tomorrow? All right, tomorrow. What's that? It sounds like somebody practicing. Now let's take a look, huh? Seems like he's right there behind that little bluster. I wonder who he is. I don't know. But if he was trying for speed, he needs a lot of practice. Well, maybe he was concentrating on accuracy. 
the way you always tell me to do. Hello. He looks pretty young. Yeah. Well, I see your target's still standing. That's just a whiskey bottle. If it had been a man, he wouldn't be standing. If it had been a man, he'd be shooting back, too. You're a stranger around here, ain't you, fella? Any law against strangers? No. No, I was just coming. Got here yesterday. Well, go ahead, son. We just wanted to watch you practice. My name ain't son. It's Jesse. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, go ahead, Jesse. All right. Watch this draw. And that was pretty close. Not close enough. Not fast enough, either. That's all right for an average man. I aim to do better than average, mister. Oh, why? I'm going to kill a man, that's why. Uh, who are you going to kill? I don't know yet, but I'll find him. Why are you going to kill him? That's my business, mister. Sure. But if you're planning to kill anybody around here, let me show you what might happen. What do you mean? You see that little daisy about 30 feet over the top of your bottle there? Yeah, I see it. All right. Well? I never saw anything like that before. Would you teach me, mister? Not as long as you want to kill somebody, Jesse. Come on, Chester. I suppose we ought to ask Doc to eat these catfish with us, Mr. Dillon. Uh, you caught them, Chester. It's your party. I think I will. Hey, there's a letter for you, sir. Oh? Old, old Jacks must have brought it over. <laughs> I plumb forgot to pick up the mail this morning. Is it important, Mr. Dillon? No, no, not particularly. Some Luke Short, he's sheriff not on an Amarillo. Mm-hmm. Says one of Quantrill's old men's headed back to Kansas, maybe to start bushwhacking again. Well, not much I can do about that. What's his name? Stapp. I never heard of him. No, I never heard of him neither. <laughs> well, hello, Doc. Hello, Chester. Doc. Do you men want to have a small beer with me? <laughs> well, I better take care of my fish if we're going to have them for supper. You're invited, Doc. Well, thank you, Chester. I'll be there, sure. <laughs> well, how about you, Matt? Want a beer? <laughs> Okay, Doc, I'll go with you. Well, now, don't forget supper. Yeah, we won't. <laughs> Bye, Chester. Oh, just think, Matt, another couple of months, and it'll be nice and cool. Flies will be gone. And there won't be any more trail herds to speak of. Oh, and life can settle down some. What would you call settling down for this town, Doc? More broken legs. Fewer gunshot wounds. <laughs> well, I like that idea. <laughs> Two beers, Sam. There he is, Bill. That's the man I told you about. Oh, hello, Jesse. Oh, he's awful fast, Bill. About the fastest I ever saw. You're the marshal here, ain't you, mister? I am. The marshal? Well, no wonder. Marshals can be killed just like anybody else, Jesse. <laughs> Ain't that right, Marshal? Yeah, that's right. Here's your beer, man. Oh, thanks, Doc. Hey, now. There's a pretty girl just came in. Sure is. Golly. Oh, it's Kitty, Matt. Yeah, I see her. Jesse, stay right here a minute. Buy a drink, Marshal. Uh, no, thanks, Jesse. One beer's my limit this time of day. Some other time, huh? Okay. I, uh, take it you haven't found the man you were planning to kill. I'll find him. Do you know killing's against the law, Jesse? The law didn't stop him from killing my pa. Your pa? Who killed your pa? I don't know. I keep telling you. Well, then how do you know he was killed? I 
couple of fellows who'd been up here said they saw him buried out on that boot hill of yours. Somebody must have killed him. When was this? What was his name? Name was Pruitt. Same as mine, of course. And nobody can kill a Pruitt and get by with it. That's what my pa always said. You always do what your pa said? I'm doing it now, ain't I? Well, you haven't killed anyone yet, Jesse. And when you do, you'll probably hang for it. Who says I will? The law. So? Look, Jesse, remember what your friend said about how marshals can be killed just like anybody else? Sure I do. Well, it's true. But there's one thing he didn't mention. It mostly depends on how good the man is who's trying to kill a marshal. You remember that? Matt! Uh, hello, Kitty. Doc? Oh, how are you, Kitty? <laughs> well, what's the trouble? That friend of yours you sent over. What? Here he comes now. Him? I don't even know him. He said you told him my name and to come over and buy me a drink. Well, he's lying. Oh. He's worse than I thought. <laughs> no offense, Marshal. <laughs> Just a way of getting acquainted. Heard you fellas mention her name. They never heard of you, mister. Not that it'd matter. Just wanted to buy you a drink, Kitty. Is that how you offer a lady a drink? You must have been raised in a chicken coop. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, my, the things you run into when you just step out of the sun for a nice cool glass of beer. You haven't been in the sun for months, Doc, so keep quiet. Uh, well, you're right, Kitty. I, have, I, I told a lie. I just thought maybe it'd help Madison if I sort of spoke like Well, it won't. <laughs> now, look, Kitty, there's no reason to stay mad. Here, then, I'll buy everybody a drink. Will that make it okay? Oh, men. I'm late. Well, how about you, Doc? No. Marshal, look. Why don't you do your drinking somewhere else? Huh? You're only making trouble here. Oh. Too good to drink with me, huh? Are you calling it, mister? I offered you a drink, that's all. And I refused it. Now get out of here. Seen friendlier town. Then maybe you better go back to him. Oh, come on, Stamp. It, shut up, Jesse. Well, you don't want to fight with him. Shut up, that's all. Oh, come on, let's go. I didn't mean nothing. Knock your ears off. Oh, that's a charming man. Oh, he's a real gentleman. You shouldn't run a fine man like that out of Dodge, Matt. I didn't, Doc. I know. You started to, and then you stopped. Why? The kid spoke up just in time. I didn't know his name was Stapp. I'd like to keep an eye on him. Oh, I see. What about that boy, Jesse? You really think his father was killed here? It happened while you were in St. Louis last winter, Doc. He was killed here, all right. Is that so? Oh, yes. Then there will be trouble. Who killed him, Matt? I did, Doc. I killed him. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, tomorrow night it's a triple play in mystery and entertainment when Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective takes on the baseball matter on most of these same CBS radio stations. Yes, you'll want to be listening every minute when Diamond, played by Dick Powell, embarks on a thrilling manhunt for a missing second baseman. It's tomorrow evening at the Star's Address. Don't miss it. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Now, next time, I try and catch the fish smaller, Chester. They make better eating. You know, <clears throat> if I was getting a free meal, Doc, I'd be mighty careful of my manners. <clears throat> I'd figure if I appeared grateful enough for whatever I was fed, I just might get asked back sometime. Oh, that just shows how cheap some men can be had, Chester. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing. 
I've done all the work so far, and I ain't going to clean up this mess. Well, Doc's a good dishwasher, Chester. Have you ever seen him wipe his instruments on that old rag he's got? Oh, Doc's a good dishwasher. <laughs> I may be busy, Doc. Oh, oh yes, that's right, Matt. You think there'll be trouble, Mr. Dillon? Well, there are a lot of men around Dodge who'll remember who killed Jesse Pruitt's father when he starts asking questions. Maybe it'd be a good idea to get that staff out of the way first. Why don't you go arrest him? I only have to turn him loose later. Uh, it'd be a pity for you to shoot a young man like Jesse, Matt. Seems awful somehow. I don't like the idea any better than you do, Doc. It looks to me like Stapp's got a lot to do with this. Whatever he's got in mind... Chester, it's hard to say what's in the mind of a man like Stapp. I figure him for nothing but a killer. Pure and simple. Just a killer. Yes, but you backed him down this afternoon, Matt. I didn't say he's a gunman, Doc. A gunman will take his chances. I doubt if Stapp will. Open it, Chester. And stand out of the way. Yes, sir. Yes, well, I, I'm getting out of the way, too. Oh, Mr. Hightower. Hello, Chester. Come in. Come yeah. in. Thank you, thank you. Sorry to bother you, gentlemen. Oh, well, how are you, sir? Mr. Sorry. Hightower, won't you sit on? No, 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 thanks, Marshal. I'm on my way home, and I'm late now. Just came by to tell you something. No. Yes. Um, you see, it's this way. When I close my printing shop of an evening, I generally stop at the Alfred Ganser for a little drink or two. Never more than two, though. Oh, I've seen you take more than two. <laughs> uh, never mind, Doc. That could be, Doc. It could be, but only on a Saturday evening. You see, my wife waits up for a little later on a Saturday evening. Oh, oh, oh she sure does. Doc, <laughs> why don't you get busy with the dishes, huh? Well, go ahead, Mr. Hightower. What is it you wanted to tell me? Oh, uh, well, I was in the Alifragansa this evening, and I heard a couple of men, that is, a man and a rather young man, they were next to me at the bar there, I heard them talking. Now, go on. Well, the young man, Marshal, his name was Pruitt. Now, I hate to say it, but he's gunning for the man who shot his father last winter. Yeah, I know all about it, Mr. Hightower. Because you found out that I did it yet? That's what I came to tell you, Marshal. The other man, I don't know his name, he's in there getting young Pruitt drunk. And he's telling him that he'll back him up when the time comes. When the time comes? Well, the way I see it is that as soon as Pruitt gets his courage up on liquor, this other man's going to tell him who shot his father, and then they're both coming after you. I see. And you think he knows I did it, huh? Oh, yes, definitely. Yes, I do. I, I can sense those things, Marshal. It was very clear. Well, thanks, Mr. Hightower. I appreciate your coming here. Not at all, Marshal. Uh, I'd better get along home now. Is sorry to be a bearer of bad tidings, Mark. Uh, yeah, th that's that's all right, Mr. Hightower. Uh, don't you worry about it. Good night, gentlemen. Hello, good, good night, night. Good night. Good night. Mr. Hightower. What are you going to do, Matt? Well, there's only one thing I can do, Doc. Go down there and put a stop to this if it isn't too late. I'm coming with you, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. But stay out of it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Hello, Jesse. Well, it's the Marshal again. Have a drink, Marshal. Uh, no thanks, Jesse. This Marshal is pretty choosy who he drinks with, kid. Yeah, I am. But I'll have a drink with you tomorrow, Jesse. No, not tomorrow. We won't be friends tomorrow. Why not? Stapp knows who killed my pa. He's going to tell me pretty soon. Stapp's no good, Jesse. He just wants to see somebody killed. Either you or me. You or me? That's right. I killed your father. What? Now, you've seen me, Jesse. You know you can't beat me, so don't try it. That true Stapp? He killed my pa? He's the man you're after, Jesse. That's him. That's him, all right. Go ahead, kid. He's standing right there in front of you. Don't try it, Jesse. Stapp won't back you up. He's been lying to you. No, he hadn't. And you can't get both of us. Yes, I can get both of you, and Stapp knows it. Go on ahead, Jesse. He killed your pa. 
This is your chance. Now go on. Killed my pa. All right, Marshal. No, Chester. No! All right, don't move, Stan. I ain't moved, Marshal. No, of course you haven't. Everything all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, get Jesse's gun, Chester. Then throw him in jail. Yes, sir. Stab. I'll give you one hour to leave Dodge. I ain't done nothing. And when you leave Dodge, leave Kansas. And don't come back. Ever. Jesse's feeling better now, Mr. Dillon. Oh, good. I want to talk to him. Unlock his cell, will you, Chester? Yes, sir. How are you, Jesse? What do you care? You're lucky I didn't have to shoot you. You shot my paw. Yeah, I shot your paw. I want to tell you why. I don't know how you remember your paw, Jesse, but when I ran into him, he wasn't much good. You can talk like that now. He was a killer, just like Stapp. A killer and a coward. That's a lie. You can ask most anybody in town. There were plenty of witnesses. Witnesses to what? Your paw shot a woman, Jesse. He was drunk, and he put a bullet right in her face at the bar of the Longhorn. And he ran out and jumped on a horse. I tried to wing him, but I missed, and I killed him. Is that true? That's true. I don't believe it. When did you last see your paw, Jesse? Five, six years, I guess. And what was he like then? What do you mean? Was he the kind of a man who'd shoot a woman? I don't know, Marshal. He wasn't... He wasn't that mean. How come he left home? Ma. She made him go. Why? Uh, he'd get drunk and beat her. She finally drove him off the place. Well... It's kind of hard to believe your own paw's no good. There are a lot of men who are no good, Jesse. Stapp's another one. Stapp? Did you ever see Stapp face a man who had an equal chance? He didn't even touch his gun tonight here. He never intended to. No, I guess he didn't, did he? I hadn't thought about that. He just wanted to see someone killed. I think Stapp's likes killings, Jesse. He likes to see people die. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He sure does, Marshal. Like that old man, that hunter out on the prairie. What? He was a nice old fellow. Gave us some meat. And then Stapp just shot him. Right in the face. The way Pa shot that woman. When was this? Just before we got to Dodge. About 30 miles up the river. Did you like his doing that, Jesse? No. No, I didn't. I hated it. Well, what do you think of Stapp now? I guess he's no good, like you say. He'll be all right, Jesse. Chester. Yes, sir. I'm going after Stapp. Wait here. Yes, sir. Where did you leave your horses, Jesse? Okay, Corral. <laughs> I'm looking for a man, Pete. He might be in your stables. There's a man in there, Marshal. Do you know him? Stranger. Been here a couple of days. Rode in with a young fellow. That's him. He's saddling up. Last stall on the left. Yeah, gonna be a fight, Marshal? I don't know, Pete. But you better take cover. I sure will. You bet I will. Who's that? It's 
Marshal Dillon step. I'm leaving town. What do you want now? Jesse told me about the hunter you shot on the prairie. Jesse told you? Yeah. Well, he's lying. He's just a kid, Marshal. You ain't going to believe him. I believe him, Step. Jesse shot him. That's why he's lying. No, Jesse didn't shoot him, Step. I'm arresting you for murder. I ain't going to hang, Marshal. No, I can't hang. Easy step. You'll get a fair trial. No, I can't hang. No. Oh, I'll die here. Hold it! your gun, Jesse. I don't want it, Marshal. Wait. You sure? I'm through with guns. What'd you pay for it, Jesse? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. All right, I'll buy it. Here. I could use the money, all right. Well, take it. Well, thank you, Marshal. Uh, you know where I could get a job? Yeah, I think so, Jesse. Why don't you go see Frank Snyder out at the L.O.? It's on the Pawnee, straight north of here. Tell him I sent you. All right, I will. Next time I come to Dodge, Marshal, probably in a few months, could I buy you that drink? Well, you just look me up, Jesse. Any time. Thank you, Marshal. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNear is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Saturday Night Country Style will be hooping it up from hillbilly hotspots of Shreveport, Louisiana, and Richmond, Virginia, just ahead tonight. Yes, the lads and lassies who really have the lowdown on the hoedown melody will perform in right and sprightly style tonight on most of these same stations when CBS Radio springs another Saturday night country-style jamboree. George Walsh speaking, and remember, you'll find Western adventure and music with Gene Autry Sunday evenings on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>